Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Shobot and in this tutorial I'll be going over the aluminium processing chain. As usual, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help make this tutorial series visible higher up in search results. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushowboat, follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat, and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can support my continued existence and help accelerate the production of these tutorials by becoming a patron on patreon.com slash otakushowboat. You can also support Pyanodon and further mod development at patreon.com slash pyanodon. As a disclaimer, Pyanodon's mods are in a constant state of flux, so any numbers and processes that I present here may change. The mods for this particular save file are nearly identical to my stream save, the list of which is linked below this video on my website's stream schedule page. You're looking for the mod list for the first Pyanodon's stream save. The only difference is that I am also using the Infinity mod to help showcase the various processing chains, including this one for aluminium. With that said, let's get started with the tutorial overview for today. Aluminium is relatively short. Uh, of a chain. Uh, however, that does not indicate that it is an easy chain, uh, to say the least. Starting off the game, you will have access to uh, converting your ore into powdered aluminium. I want to make a note he right here at the beginning. I'm going to show you, you can probably just see off to the side of the screen, uh, what an actual stone furnace line setup looks like for aluminium. The point in the game in which you need aluminium happens to be after you get the ability to start the red uh, science ore processing. Or, alternatively, after you get access to advanced foundries. So, the chances of you doing aluminium in stone furnaces are actually fairly low. Um... If you are doing it through stone furnaces, I would highly suggest moving to the advanced foundries as soon as possible. Chances are, if you're doing stone furnaces and not using advanced foundries at the point in the game where you need to set up aluminium for the first time, you probably have a whole bunch of other chains that also should be on advanced foundries uh, by now. Uh, and that will vastly assist you with your overall output of your iron and copper and tin and glass uh, especially so just going to point that out there aluminium is a resource that you will need after automating your red science as you go into needing uh, your aluminium plates going into your circuits and green science setups. Uh, aluminium, of course, is also very important for the alloy duralumin. Uh, it is an alloy with copper. Uh, and getting access to that, if we do a search in the tech tree for duralumin, uh, you get access to the first duralumin recipe, <laughs> excuse me, at aluminium ore processing one right at Red Science, converting the plates into Duralumin. Uh, you're going to want this to uh, make fast inserters, for example, uh, in the early game. Uh, so do bear in mind that at Red Science, you do unlock uh, the powdered aluminium recipe, and then you can make molten out of powdered, uh, which is the only way of getting into your plates at red science processing so at red science you're either going to be doing advanced foundries converting the ore directly into plates or you're going to do the first step powdered aluminium into molten so that is your this is the extent of red science this first step uh, for further efficiency bonuses at red science uh, it's just ore into powdered, 
into molten. Now, to do that, you're going to, of course, need the borax and the graphite and the ability to make an, extra, an electric arc furnace, which, if we have a look, the uh, electric arc furnace, you can make at this point in the game. So that is perfectly fine. Uh, you should have steel uh, as well as all the things you need to at least handcraft uh, the electric arc furnaces by now. So this may end up being one of your first molten recipes that you do uh, in your save game outside of potentially iron uh, if you go this route at the early game. At green science, you get access all the way up to pulp 2 processing into molten, and that is just powdered into pulp 1 and then pulp 1 into pulp 2. These will have outside inputs that you have to deal with as well. Uh, lime, in particular, being the primary one, which will be a drain on your coke supply, so be sure to... Uh, at green science, you're probably going to be able to uh, have started up your automation of mushroom of mushroom farms and high pressure furnaces which i very highly suggest uh to get your infinite coal going and therefore your infinite coke going um from pulp 2 at blue science uh you can go all the way up to high grade all the way up to high grade so this entire block opens up at uh, your chemical science packs and that is uh, the conversion of the uh, pulp to sorry uh, from here to here these five steps uh, from your pulp two uh, into pulp three excuse me put that back pulp two into three three into four four into illuminate and then sodium illuminate into crystallized sodium illuminate. You could stop here at crystallized, but there's no real point because you can go all the way up to high grade anyway at uh, blue science. So from there, it go, it's literally one more step to go into high grade. So this, there's no point in whatsoever. It may as well not exist as a uh, molten recipe. Uh, it might be a holdover from some older version of the uh, mods, but uh, yeah, high grade is what you're going for here. And then, of course, at Utility Science, if you ever make it there, uh, is when you get access to the really, really nice uh, reduced into centered from high grade. Always go all the way up to centered, never stop at reduced. Uh, you get two units of centered per one unit of reduced, so uh, I tend to present what the uh, input and output values are on the molten recipes on the text version of these overviews. Uh, I am thinking I do sort of need to provide at least a little bit of context to that. Uh, <laughs> some sort of ratio, but the issue with presenting ratios is that ratios change. <laughs> They're more likely to change uh, over time. Uh, but just just know... You get two centered for every one reduced. Uh, so even though you get less molten per centered, you're getting more overall for two units of centered versus one unit of reduced. So always bear that in mind. Across the board, everything that has centering available to it, that is the case. Okay, let us go through this chain. So, as I had said, this is your stone smelting line. You are likely not going to ever do the stone smelting line. This is just for demonstration. Uh, and for reference, this will give you one and a half plates out, approximately. By the time you are concerned about even thinking about getting your... Uh, mining going of aluminium, which, by the way, aluminium will be the second, potentially, uh, of the ore types that you will mine that will require an outside fluid. I say potentially second because it depends on whether or not you've set up lead and titanium yet. Uh, 
This one, however, requires a gas type that you are technically already making at this point in the game, which is coal gas. You should already be making coal gas because your current coke from the early game was made in a destructive distillation column recipe that gives you not only coke from coal, but tar and coal gas. So at the start of the game, you'll be wanting to take some of that coal gas or potentially even at this point in the game what you can do is since you have mushroom farms if you are willing to invest the resources into a large number of the fawagi plantations you can take those turn them into coal which you should have access to at red science uh, and then take the coal line that dedicated coal line throw them th through the DDC process for coal into coke and then coke into ash, basically, to clear out some of that uh, coke to make sure that the process keeps moving. Uh, you can store the ash in the iron oxides or use the iron oxide to make additional iron plates. Uh, probably want to make the additional iron plates. Uh, the ash you will soon be able to void out once you do get titanium, initial titanium set up anyway. Uh, which will require an, an acetylene setup, and you're going to want something specific to get coke as well. But uh, this will give you tar and coal gas, and guess what? You can convert tar directly into coal gas. So that will give you the ability to convert water in the form of mushrooms into coal gas to mine your initial aluminium. So that is that. Of course, I will always suggest, at the very start of the game, if you're not interested in starting the uh, step one ball mill process yet, uh, because maybe you don't have, well, you should have everything that you need to at least make the ball mill, but maybe you don't have uh, the borax set up yet, or don't want to spend the graphite yet to uh, make molten and cast the molten and maybe you don't have the sand castings to cast the molten uh, quite yet. Uh, sand castings just sand and creosote, which creosote is made directly from tar. And I just explained the way that you get tar. I explain this tar process in basically every tutorial uh, for ore processing for good reason. For very good reason. And it will probably not be the last time I talk about it even in this tutorial because it is such it has such high utility despite the amount of space that it uses it's 40 ish mushroom farms per yellow belt of coal out uh, and then however much you get for a yellow belt of coal it's for four yellow belts for four yellow belts it's like 330 some odd units of tar or like, I don't know, it's like four, five hundred-ish, five hundred something units of coal gas uh, per second for four yellow belts. So divide that by four to get what you get out of a single line. Uh, but anyway, always do the hot air recipe when doing the advanced foundry because you get uh, clearly a lot more out of it. It's usually about a 50% bonus. So it, this does uh, have some wiggle room to it. Some things are a lot more lead you actually get a lot more than 50 percent extra uh and then some processes a lot of the later processes are actually a lot less than 50 percent more because i think it's just a static it might just be a static plus two uh on the plate output uh with hot air so always bear that in mind so red science <laughs> yeah this one's pretty simple you have to deal with the uh gravel as a byproduct here uh, so definitely bear that in mind. You might want to start this after starting your titanium and have access to uh, your glorious burners. Uh, burners, very, very useful items right here. Burners, they require titanium plates, but this is like your very few things use titanium in the early game. This is going to be practically your sole sink of titanium. It's just making burners, and you're going to want... A lot of them. Uh, just understatement of the century, you're going to want a lot of them. 
Uh, two ball mills is actually enough to uh, fully consume a yellow belt, uh, converting it into three powdered per second. Three powdered per second. Uh, and then if you go into the molten recipe here, we can see, hey, for, uh, I think this is 12 Mark one electric arc furnaces. Yeah, it's a lot of electric arc furnaces uh, to process three powdered uh, into 15 molten per second. Uh, note the relatively large amount of graphite and borax that you will need to get this molten. Uh, and then 15 molten. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a boost. That's a bit of a boost. Uh, you're talking at like seven and a half, I think? Seven something? Uh, plates out versus 2.25 uh, in this molten casting. Uh, oh, it's limestone. Excuse me. For molten of the higher... Why do I say... Oh, this is... Excuse me. This is not for aluminium. This is... This was cut and paste from... Uh, Either tin, yeah, from tin. Really, I did my tin recipe and... Heavy oil? Yeah, for here. But that's... Titanium, excuse me. That's titanium that I copied that from. Not, uh, not from tin, no, from, uh, titanium. That's limestone sand castings heavy oil. This one is just graphite and borax. This one is just graphite. We're doing we're doing live stuff here. Graphite and borax. There we go. And then just sand castings on casting. That, uh, that is that. Uh, various different things. I note here what the, uh, outputs are on the molten recipes, uh, just as a point of reference. This, I believe, is r a rough estimate of the current values processing a yellow belt across the board for each of the various different processes. This would be high grade, and then this would be uh, centered. Yeah. So, 15. It's like 7.5. And, and then, full yellow belt at, uh, at the next step, which is the pulp 2. So, at green science. At green science. Oh, boy. So, this is where things are going to start getting a little bit more complex because you're actually going to need pulp, aluminium pulp, for getting up to your uh, red circuits. So bear that in mind, you're going to need, I think it is pulp one. I can find... the pulp one. Yeah, pulp one is used for capacitor twos in very, very small amounts, but that does mean that you will have to have it routed over to use a little bit of it for your capacitor twos. So definitely bear that in mind. And this, of course, is an ingredient for your circuit twos, which you need to go into blue science. So you're going to be doing this no matter what, no matter what. And since you're here, you may as well just add the steam to go into uh, pulp 2, but in order to even start this, you're going to need phosphoric acid, and I will have a dedicated tutorial covering uh, the phosphate rock processing chain uh, to get into phosphoric acid. Um, the downside on phosphoric acid is that it is a very, very low output numerically uh it's very low output no numerically uh and in fact the way that it works is you're going to convert your rocks into powdered 
phosphate rocks, and then into phosphorus acid, into phosphine phosphoric, and then phosphine into phosphoric. Although you'll you'll need all three of those: phosphorus, phosphine, and phosphoric acid uh, at, for various things along the way. So you have to like bust all three of them, or at least plan to be moving around all three of those at some point. But yeah, anyway, I'll discuss that more in that uh, dedicated tutorial. Just know that you will need to have phosphoric acid set up, which that's sin gas to mine, for the record, um, from the uh, ancient remains that exist on the map. So once you get that and you can start doing this, you can then easily convert this by adding in steam through whatever method you want to use to get steam. Through whatever fuel you want to spend to get steam to go right into pulp 2 and that gives you the approximately a yellow belt output here but at green science you also get access to the molten recipe for duralumin so provided you've also set up molten copper at this point definitely start doing the molten based recipe for duralumin for duralumin at this point for a much higher output uh, versus using plates At Blue Science, we can begin working towards our high grade, and that involves making Aluminium Pulp 3, but Aluminium Pulp 3 is going to need this stuff called Alamac. Wonderful Alamac. Now, Alamac is used in titanium and aluminium only. However, it's pretty simple. It is just aromatics and oleochemicals into Alamac. Now, oleochemicals I have covered before. This stuff is nichrome and lard and a closed-loop water system uh, to make oleochemicals. So just know that you will have to spend a tiny bit of nichrome and a fair amount of lard to fuel the amount of alumac that you'll need for your titanium and your aluminium. And, of course, you can get aromatics uh, biotically uh, for free cost of water, basically. Uh, it's uh, it's hydrogen and soil for Elysia, and then just water for Falgi. The uh, hydrogen is splitting water, and soil is water. So water plus water equals aromatics. And then nichrome plus lard. Lard, again, ultimately from water. Nichrome can be considered ultimately from water it's a long way far removed from it but yes you can get nichrome from water provided you ground bore your uh your nickel and your chromium but yeah this is not a uh, limited resource either none of this is limited resources <laughs> nothing in the game is a limited resource except for rare earth oxides but even then on a map of infinite scale with tons of spawned in stuff, even that is uh, effectively not finite either, for all intents and purposes. Once you get into your pulp 3 and have the Alamac to feed that, you can. it's a pretty easy conversion, it just goes right into pulp 4, just add water, deal with the uh, tailings. It's Pulp 4 where it gets a little bit more difficult. Just a little bit more difficult because here you're going to need starch, sodium hydroxide, and sodium chlorate. Well, sodium chlorate. Sodium chlorate is from salt and steam. Salt and steam. You need twice as much salt as you do, as you get, of sodium chlorate. So, ultimately, it's, like, a lot. It's a, it's a pretty large amount that you ultimately need out of this. Uh, now, I have obviously designed this whole thing to operate around the concept of processing a yellow belt of ore so do 
bear in mind we are processing a yellow belt here. Uh, and the amount of uh, sodium chlorate was changed, actually, fairly recently, because this used to be a heck of a lot of sodium chlorate wherever it gets used on the various chains. Sodium chlorate, by the way, is used not just here, it's also used in titanium and nexalit. Uh, so definitely bear that in mind. And apparently it's used in vanadium. So four processing chains it's used for, but I think it was the nexalit chain in particular that uses a heck of a lot of it. And uh, so that had been modified at some point. So definitely just beware. Uh, it's twice as much salt uh, as the sodium chlorate need. Uh, sodium hydroxide, really easy enough. Uh, and all these values are really low anyway. Uh, and then starch. Starch is, well, there are two recipes for it. Either way, you need powdered releasia seeds and fiberboard. You have fiberboard by doing circuits anyway, so just scale it up a little bit. Uh, powdered releasia, this is simply just pulp milling your releasia. Uh, seeds into powdered seeds and then sodium sulfate well you're very much likely in the process of making this if you haven't already in fact you have done this already uh, because this is blue science so therefore you should have some of this by now uh, it's needed for something or other on the line I can't remember off the top of my head, I, but you definitely probably most likely already have some of this already. Uh, and just like you should have what you need for, yeah, just everything here. Everything here, you should have what you need for it by now. This produces both sodium illuminate and aluminium tailings. This is where things get a little bit interesting because the aluminium tailings convert into vanadates. Vanadates are part of the vanadium chain, and that's what we'll be talking about in a long time from now. So just bear in mind that aluminium has a byproduct that is directly involved in the vanadium chain that is that sort of splits into a little bit of vanadium so just bear that in mind you can actually get a little bit of vanadium out of your aluminium processing uh, but otherwise the element the aluminate sodium aluminate gets converted into crystallized sodium aluminate by adding pressured air then you need, it's our good friend Nichrome again, as well as more sodium hydroxide and graphite to convert it into high grade. And it actually gives you a byproduct of water too, which is uh, a little amusing. Uh, it, this is a not insignificant amount of sodium hydroxide, and it may be a not insignificant amount of Nichrome uh, ultimately, uh, but it, this is fine. And that gives you the high grade, which, as I have mentioned before, here is your high grade. It's approximately 4794-ish uh, on the output, which is like, let's say for all intents and purposes, about 20 plates per second. Let, let's, let's just say a, a, a little over 20 plates per second. Uh, effectively that you can pretty much count on uh, it would be enough to give you duralumin plus the full belt out of aluminium for every 15 per second you throw of ore at your high grade processing and then of course at blue science actually you can go all the way up to reduced the reason why I haven't really said this to this point is because is because when you get access to blue science and you actually get access to this recipe you're not going to be able to do this uh, and the reason for that is the direct reduction plant actually I can uh, open up 
crafting menu here. While previously the direct reduction plant had fairly low tech items to make it, uh, like T1 items to make it, uh, as of a couple of months prior to this video, uh, after having pointed this out myself, uh, it has been changed to be more in line with when you tend to unlock direct reduction plant recipes. Therefore, it's requiring circuit board 3s and super steel, uh, which you probably have purple science by now, probably. Uh, this comes really late. Uh, this comes really late in the blue science cycle, which is why, A, when I was just doing my initial intro talking about, oh, you can go all the way up to high grade uh, at blue science, I com it completely slipped my mind that actually you can go all the way up to the 99.9% .9 reduced aluminium uh, at blue science technically, but ultimately it will be a bit out of reach until you are quite far uh, in blue if you haven't already gone into purple. So I would actually sort of call this purple science, because even though it unlocks at blue, this is more of a purple science time frame uh, when you actually get access to being able to do this uh, reduction. Uh, and, you know, overall, I think that this would actually make more sense as being viable as an unlock at purple science and having centering at yellow, but that's just my opinion. This may or may not change at some point in the future across the board, but I would like to see... Uh, Reduction recipes in general as a purple science tech unlock uh, for the various uh, ore processing chains. Just so that you have a little bit of time between blue and yellow. You're at purple. You haven't set up your utility science yet. You're sort of at circuit threes, thinking about making the intelligent units, aka circuit fours. Uh, trying to plan out for that, and you might need a little bit extra output from the various chains, uh, in which that's when this really becomes a thing. So, that is uh, all the way unlocked at Blue Science. Uh, of course, as I've said before, this may change. There are some things that I bring up in these tutorial series that Pyanodon has actually changed. Uh, after I release these videos, so do bear in mind, Pyanodon does watch these tutorial videos uh, and may make changes from them. But as it stands, as of the recording of this video, Blue Science unlocks reduced aluminium, and therefore, while you can technically come all the way up here, if you make the diesel, if you want to spend the iron oxide, because that's another change here. Usually reduction requires sodium sulfate and not iron oxide. This one requires iron oxide and is unique for that. Uh, and also if you're processing a yellow belt by the way of the aluminium, you only actually really need like you actually only need one building for a lot of this. It's, it's just one building for like all of this. Uh, each step along the chain and then I think it's this needs to be two, but these are all just one building. Even like Mark 1 and Mark 2 buildings for these uh, is just fine to do everything that you need. And this is stable. This is stable uh, processing here. In fact, that's where it's coming in, so it doesn't... Yeah, it's processing everything that comes in as it comes in. Uh, so, that is all the way up to Blue Science. Blue science, the highest you can get. And then at yellow, you get access to centering, uh, which is lime. Excuse me? Oh. Which is lime plus syngas plus pressured air. 
plus a fuel source. Uh, it doesn't matter that this is Wheel Rod 5, so it can be whatever you want. Uh, and that will, of course, be your penultimate final step, giving you all the molten on the planet. And then here, here's, here's the thing, though. So at high grade, which is the first thing you'll reasonably able be able to get up to at Blue Science, 4794, that is a little bit more. It, it's not a huge, well, it's not a huge difference versus 30 down here. 4794, that's a bit over 50% more. The difference here going into reduction while costing more see this one requires heavy oil now at reduction we've now added heavy oil uh, for this for the later stages so I guess I can say heavy oil down at the bottom here heavy oil on the last two steps you're adding heavy oil for reduction, and you're only getting, like, two, three, three extra units of molten, ultimately, out of this. Well, I mean, eh? It's like an extra four plates per second-ish. Like, okay. The real bonus comes in at centering anyway when you can actually convert your reduced into centered. So this process, this difference, may not be worth it to you. But if you're at the point in the game where you can make direct reduction plants, if you can make re direct reduction plants, if you're not at yellow science yet, this is technically an option. It'll cost diesel and pressured air and iron oxide it will be up to you whether or not these levels of inputs are going to be worth these this difference in output if it's going to be worth that difference so do bear that in mind i think still high grade will be what you want to end up going for uh, and leaving it at high grade uh, until you get to utility science and can do the double step up through reduction and centering, like with everything else uh, that has access to reduction and centering, besides the other exceptions. So, that, as they say, is that. That is aluminium. That wasn't so bad, was it? That was not bad at all. It has some funky inputs in the form of starch and sodium chlorate. Some slightly funky inputs. It's going to be quite a bit of sodium hydroxide and just sodium-based stuff anyway. Uh, but I have explained in previous tutorials about the uh, methods with which to get lots and lots and lots of salt uh, in the form of uh, saline water from tar from coal sourced from mushrooms that whole process there otherwise it's pretty simple some people may want to just stick with pulp 2 for the whole game uh, others may want to go up to the uh, to the high grade or the reduced I would think I would prefer to stick with the high grade until yellow science and skip the reduction plant uh, until after I get access to centering because the difference between these two is relatively insignificant uh, overall. But you do get access to it at blue science, which, uh, yeah, should have mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, for people who don't watch the whole video before leaving comments, <laughs> that might be a thing that happens. Like, hey, it, it, you can do reduced at blue. Can't you do reduced at blue? When I totally did the did the thing here where I was like, oh, you can do all of this 
Actually, you can do all of this. You can actually do all of this all the way at blue science, but I'm going to leave it like it is just because this extra step going to reduce, that's not really going to happen technically at blue science. That's probably only going to happen after you get at least the ability to make purple science. Um, because chances are by the time you get circuit threes, you'll... Uh, already have purple science by the time you make uh, circuit threes uh, and i say that because gold processing is technically a purple science uh, which you need for circuit threes which are needed to make the direct reduction plants um, but there is a particle accelerator recipe for gold that lets you get gold at blue science not at purple so really it just depends you're you're if you've gone through that effort to do it at blue Sure, but I think for most people, the average player who's not really thinking about doing the particle accelerator recipes, or doesn't really know too much about it, or doesn't want to doesn't want to set up that excessive amount of rayon to really do it big time for particle accelerators, doesn't want to spend that power for the particle accelerators quite yet, though you will have to uh, going into the end of the game. Uh, I think most people will have done uh, their purple science, set up their kimberlite chains to get their diamonds, uh, and done purple science and unlocked gold processing and set up gold processing at chromium uh, processing. So, uh, because gold is an offshoot of the chromium chain, which we will be covering eventually in a few more tutorials uh, from now, uh, I think. So the next tutorial will be titanium. Followed by lead, and then chromium, most likely. Uh, and then I will go into uh, circuit ones and green science, because that will be... I'll have covered all of the ore types that you need to process going into green science at that point. Uh, and yes, chromium will be involved in the green science, but not necessarily the circuit ones, but it still needs to be done at some point, and since I'm doing all of the uh, ore processing chains right now, we may as well do all of the important ones all together, the very important ones all together. Uh, and then once we get through green science, then we can focus more on the things like niobium and nickel and uh, zinc and things like that molybdenum uh, all the other ore types that will be introduced uh, that you need uh, nexalit as well uh, going into your circuit 2 processing and chemical science packs so with that i would like to thank you all for watching this has been otaku showboat if you have enjoyed today's tutorial don't forget to comment like subscribe and hit the notification bell to help keep these videos higher in search results. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushowboat. Follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can help support my continued existence as well as the uh, increased rate of production of these tutorial series by going to my Patreon and becoming a patron at patreon.com slash otaku showboat you can also support the production of the mod pack itself by going to patreon.com slash on and becoming a patron there as i said the next tutorial will be that of titanium and i hope to see you all then